Hi, I'm Siddharth Kumar from Electrical Electronics. Hi, I'm Varun Reddy from Electronics and Communication. I'm Pujit Prakash from Electronics and Communication. And we are Team 46-1 from NTK Suratka. Our paper for the Texas Instruments India Analog Design Contest 2012-2013 is a wireless sensor net assisted roaming remote surveillance system. Non-cooperative localization and tracking of an individual has been a long-standing problem and the reason for it being so important is the vast number of applications that it can be used for. Most systems require prior infrastructure installed in the environment. And our motivation was to be able to design a system that is deployable and adaptable to changing situations. We started our project with survivor detection after a disaster in mind. This led us to divide our system into three main components. A portable battery powered sensor node, which is easily deployable. A mobile relay that acts as a server with the ability to traverse rough terrain as well as send back live feed from the field. And a multi-client system allowing control and data acquisition from the server on multiple platforms like Windows PC and any Android device. This is a sensor node. The first part of the node is a PR sensor or a uh, passive infrared sensor. The output of the sensor is a sensory wave of 10 uh, millivolt peak to peak and it has a DC offset of around 1.5 volt. This 10 millivolt peak to peak signal is too low and will make adjusting the presets of the comparator very difficult. So instead the signal is passed through a two stage active bandpass filter with a peak gain of about 30 dB implemented using a TI LM324N quad op amp. The filter has a maximum gain at frequencies less than 10 Hz and hence is ideal for detecting movement but it also removes noise. The output of the two stage filter is passed to a comparator circuit which converts the analog output of the filters to a digital output by comparing it with, uh, with preset values set by these potentiometers. This is used to trigger a hardware interrupt on the MSP430G255 i3 on the sensor node. When the interrupt is triggered on the MSP430G255 i3, it sets a data packet containing the sensor node number and the pin number of the sensor, sensor is triggered to the CC2530 Zigbee net, uh, network processor mini kit. It also has an LED to indicate when the interrupt is triggered. The whole setup is powered by two AAA batteries providing 3.3 uh, volts. The main function of the robot is to act as a Zigbee relay and for video surveillance. The base is a tracked robot chassis made by DF Robot. The controller used is an Arduino Dumelanova based clone. On top of this goes the BeagleBone which is powered by a Texas Instruments AM335X Sitara ARM processor. The camera is attached to the front of the robot and is connected to the BeagleBone through a USB hub. The Wi-Fi dongle is made by ASUS and is also attached to the USB hub. A second shield is placed atop the beagle bone to prevent it from shots and other faulty connections. The robot base is connected through USB serial to the beagle bone. This is done again through the USB hub. The battery pack consisting of 4 AA batteries is connected to the robot base. The Texas Instruments CC2530 Mini Zigbee Net Processor is connected to the BeagleBone through the shield. The BeagleBone itself is powered by a 1 amp 5 volt adapter. The fact that every peripheral is connected via USB makes it easy to swap out a component or add more to the bot. The whole setup can be assembled in less than 2 minutes. After boot up, we can control the bot with any Wi-Fi enabled device which has an SSH terminal or a custom app can be built to handle the control for any OS such as Windows, Linux or in this case an Android phone. As you can see in the inset on the bottom right, the live feed from the MOSP is being relayed to the computer using the GStreamer plugin on the BeagleBone and the client side while it is moving around. Hence we can navigate the MOSP remotely through the Wi-Fi connection. Uh, 
I shall now explain the MATLAB front-end and theory behind our localization algorithm. In this plot, we see an 8x8 grid. The point 9x5 is the location of our first sensor, which has two PIR sensors at an angle of 90 degrees to each other. They each have a 90 degree field of vision shown by these arcs. Therefore, we see that the colored grids represent the field of vision for each sensor. We have a central node of four PIR sensors. The field of view of the PIR sensor facing the first node is shown here. We use this setup as a central node can verify the blind spots between the two sensor nodes on each edge. Here we can see the intersection matrix of the three sensors. As you can see, the area of largest weightage is the most likely region for detection of the individual. In the next five slides, I shall show the regions covered by each node. These matrices are triggered due to motion and during every refresh cycle, sum up to give a localized area of detection. This is the location for node 1. Node 1's first sensor covers this region and node one second sensor covers this region. This is the location for node two. Node two's first sensor covers this region and node two second sensor covers this region. This is the location for node three. Node three's first sensor covers this region and node three's second sensor covers this region. This is the location for node four and node four's first sensor covers this region and node 4's second sensor covers this region. The central node, node 5, is located right in the center and each node points radially outwards. The intersection matrix of the center can be seen because each sensor has a slightly more than a 90 degree field of view. Now you can see the system in action. As I take a lap around the whole sensor network area, they detect my movement and relate through the MOSP to the base station computer. The MATLAB program then visualizes my track and then translates it to my present position by checking for multiple unique triggers. As can be seen in figure 1, there are many false triggers, but after a refresh cycle, the figure 2 obtains my actual position and the algorithm filters out these false triggers. It is able to accurately obtain my start position and end position and can locate where I am at any stage with good accuracy. Now we go to another case where there are two people involved. When the first entry takes place, the sensor network recognizes it and tracks it for sufficient time to give the present position. Then the second entry takes place and both get tracked simultaneously. This is visible in the graph by the two red squares indicating our present position. When the first person leaves, the system starts to track only the second. Figure 1 shows that the first person is not present in the area. Well, figure 2 still shows two people as it needs to wait for its refresh cycle to update the present position. <laughs> 